Deuteronomy 7 and verse 6. Yeah. For thou art a holy people to the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people and to himself above all people upon the face of the earth. All right, the Lord chose you, brother. You are a chosen people. Holy only means set apart, man. Different from the nations. And if you're different from the nations, you ain't got no business with uh, uh, dwelling with them and mixing with them like that in the first place. Did you know that this was the damn birthplace of the KKK? Hey, Come here for a minute. Check it out. The earth is given unto the hand of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. Jake, uh, I'm talking about our people. They like to mix and mingle with their oppressors here, Wait, right? They enjoy being or uh, holding hands, being hand in hand with those people that have done so many atrocious things, so many horrible things to our people, as if they've forgotten about what's been transpiring here for uh, the last hundred, uh, uh, multiple hundreds of years. Okay, let me get this real quick. We go, we gonna slide right into the lesson. Right? This is the second epistle of Paul. Of called Timothy, right. chapter 4, and verse number 2. Preach the word. What? Preach the word. What? Preach the word. What? Be instant in season, right. out of season. Right. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering okay. and doctrine. Right. So we here in the last favorable days of the season, the last warm days. Right now, bringing out the word and truth and sincerity is in season. Okay, you're going to see brothers out here when it's out of season, when it's not fashionable. Hey, it's, it's all good, brother. It's all good. What's your nationality, King? Let's chop it up for a little bit. Hey, if you're black, if your father is black, you'll most likely be an Israelite from the tribe of Judah, brother. All right? We got to repent and keep these commandments, man. We're not going to make it here in America, man. All right? And that's our whole mission, man. But like I was saying, man, it's a lot of our people. I see so many of our people that's joined hand in hand with their oppressors, with their adversaries, right? As if they got it made, as if they're escaping some sort of curse that's been placed upon them by being with their enemies, right? But they don't know. They just delivered themselves into the hands of the, of the ones that hate them. All right? All it takes is the right situation the right war, the right conflict to kick off, and you'll see these people for who they really are. Let's go ahead and get into it. Give me uh, Toby 4 and 12, King. And brother, you give me Ezra 9 and start at 1. All right? All right, because we're going to get into this. Because uh, we all about compassion up here. So I, I don't want to ever condemn any of my people, any of my brothers. But at the same time, I want to let you know through the Bible, thus say of the Lord, thus say of the Holy Bible, we are not, we are not like these people that you chase after. We are not like them. We're not meant to mix and mingle with them. And we never were. Yeah. All right? And you got to understand this. All right? Go ahead, bring that out. Book of Tobit, 4 and verse 12. Yeah. Beware of all whoredom, my son. Beware of all whoredom, my son. And chiefly, take a wife of the, the seed of thy fathers. And take not a strange woman to wife, which is not of thy father's tribe. For we are the children of the prophets, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Remember, my son, that our fathers from the beginning, even that they are married, wives of their own kindred, and were blessed in their children, and their seed shall inherit the land. Okay, so to keep these words is to be blessed. To follow these words is to be blessed to chase after your enemy, to mingle that holy seed that has been that you have been blessed with, with the inferior race, an inferior nation, okay, that is inviting a curse upon yourself. All right, we have been urged since the very beginning of our people to always prefer our own above any other. And really deep down, man, Jake, get, get these get these sick little fetishes, man, for these, you know what I'm saying, these white, and vice versa. Our women, man, they see these, uh, these, 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 these dogs, man, these pink devils, man, and they might have a couple of dollars. They might be enjoying the height of their kingdom and their rulership, and they want to kind of partake in that, man. Every every damn Eve thinks some some, some sort of so-called European prince is going to come and sweep them off their feet and come rescue them like this is a goddamn Disney movie, man. All right? And that's not the case, man. That is not so, man. All right? How long have our people been held in bondage? You think about brothers like Tim, uh, Emmett Till, man. He didn't even look at the damn white woman, man. And look what they did to him. Say, you can't handle the word, man. You can't handle this. You can't stop this movement, man. 
All right. And I'm here out of all honestly, I'm gonna talk to my people, man. I'm gonna direct this. I'm gonna direct my words right to my people and let you know I wanna hit you right in the heart with it, man. Make you think about that, man. Right? What's wrong with preferring your own people? What's wrong with being who you are? Why why do you feel the need to chase after people that you know don't have your best interest at heart? Hey brother. Hey brother, give me two minutes, brother. I'm gonna give you one verse real quick. Give me Deuteronomy seven and six real quick, brother Raw. This is what the word uh, this is what the Lord think about you. Deuteronomy 7 and verse 6. Yeah. For thou art a holy people to the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people upon the face of the earth. All right, the Lord chose you, brother. Don't ignore that calling, brother. Don't keep ignoring it. All right, because you'll be here one minute, you'll be gone the next, okay? All right, you are a chosen people. Holy only means set apart, man. Different from the nations. And if you're different from the nation, you ain't got no business with uh, uh, dwelling with them and mixing with them like that in the first place. Hey. All right? Did you know that this was the damn birthplace of the KKK? Hey, brother, come in for a minute. Check it out. What's going on with you, brother? You believe in the Bible? I believe in the higher power. Okay, all praise. I'll take that. What is it about the Bible that you may not agree with? Because if you believe in a higher power, then you know that he set forth directions and commandments for you to keep and by method that would be the words of this book am I right or am I wrong okay so you saying that you believe in a higher power all praises for that brother do you see yourself anywhere on this side right here I want to ask you what your nationality is real quick I'm at the top you're at the top right that's what the world call us man they want to program you into calling yourself a nigga a negro an afro-american and African-American, right? All these words uh, uh, have been placed upon you, right? Against your will, you had nothing to really do with it. Brothers just brought it out earlier, and the term African-American only came about in the, what, mid-80s, late-80s? That means I would be older than my own nationality. What, what sense do that make? That don't make no sense. How did these, how did we get here to this particular point in time? Why are these things upon us? Let me get Deuteronomy 28 and 37, and brother, you get 28 and 15 and hold that. Let me show you something that's written in the Bible. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 38, chapter 28, and verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword. What's a proverb? What's a byword? A byword is only, by definition, a word that you will call yourself that does not apply to you. Like black, right? African American. These two words, they have an origin. They came from two separate names. You have the name Leo Scipio Africanus. Who was this man? This man was a, a Roman general, ancient Roman de general, right? He was accredited for conquering the landmass that we call Africa today. It was called Ham back then. Ham, Ham. Okay, that was the land back then. He conquered it and renamed it after himself. That is a characteristic, a trait of who? What race of people you know go to these different lands, conquer them, and then rename them after themselves as if they made them. Come on, brother. Yeah, you know. Right, yeah. Go ahead and say it. Because right. I'm about to show you something else that's written in the Bible. That's all right. You don't have to be afraid, brother. Go ahead and be bold in that thing. Because you ain't doing nothing but speaking the truth. That's the so-called European and so-called white man that do that. Right. Now, let me show you something else. Give me Psalms 49 and 11 real quick. Psalms 49 and verse 11. No. Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever. You can't tell the white man, no. You can't tell them that America ain't got much longer. Okay, in their hearts and their minds, man, they want this kid, this empire of theirs, this kingdom to go on forever and ever, throughout generation upon generation upon generation, for their kids and their kids and their kids and so on and so forth, right? And their dwelling places to all generations, they call their lands after their own name. Whoa, there go right there. I didn't sit and read, that's in the Bible. I didn't sit and write that, okay? The Lord is letting you know who these people are through their methods, okay, through their methodology, through the different things that they do. We love y'all, y'all are Israelites according to the Bible, y'all are God's chosen people. Brother, it's time for you to be the king that you are meant to be and lead your household in righteousness, okay? Now, brother, uh, back to what I was saying. What other nation on earth is known for doing that, okay? And we can point out a, a million different examples of how this so-called European man, much like a virus or a cancer, Brother, you are an Israelite, okay? You already know it. All right, brother, you got to get your fringes, King. Get them fringes, man. You can, you can rock that. You can style that thing out, man. 
All right, brother. Okay, brother. Let's get with it, man. We got to make haste to serve the Lord. Right. All right. So we want to urge you to get on this thing very quickly. So let's get back to what I'm talking about. Did you finish that? Yeah. That 49 and 11, brother? You finished that, right? Okay. So the Bible is letting you know. Nation by nation. He's, the Bible is breaking it down to you and letting you know. This is this man right here that I'm speaking of. Give me Job 9 and 24. Up, up, right. This is, that, this is that wicked man. This is that defiled man. Okay. Nobody else on earth. Is like this wicked man. Give me Hebrews 12 and 13. Now hold that real quick. It's the mighty prophet Job, chapter 9, and verse 24. The earth is given unto the hand of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? Okay, so your enemy was very methodical with you. Okay, and he knew that if you had caught wind to the fact that the uh, all of these figures throughout the Bible, like Moses, uh, 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 like Joshua, like the Mo like the Lord Himself, if you knew that He looked was a black, a so-called black man that looked like you, that would empower you to keep the commandments. Once you start keeping the commandments, that is your heritage. You realize that's your heritage. You begin to be a ruler on this earth the way the Most High created you to be. But if he was able and successful with taking the faces of all those important figures, smudging them, wiping them off, putting his own features on them, so that when you see these important figures, you think, oh, man, the Bible, the, the white man wrote the Bible, okay? The white man is all over the Bible. Look at Moses. Moses is white. Look at Jesus. Jesus is white. Okay, they just put they put they just put white faces on, and that's something that's, that's literal. That's called iconoclasm. If you have some games, okay, con. That's called iconoclasm. So that's the actual act of them taking these these different paintings and artistic renderings and repainting them, destroying them, recreating them, putting their own images on them, and then releasing them to the public. All right. So he's very methodical in that. Brother, bring that up. First Maccabees 3 and 48. Yeah. And lay open the book of the law, wherein the heathen have sought to paint the likeness of their images. Okay. Right there. So throughout the Bible, the Bible is letting you know, hey, the white man ain't got nothing to do with this book. Okay, he never did. Hey, hey family, let me get two minutes with y'all. Let me get two minutes. Y'all believe in the Bible? Anybody believe in the Bible? You do, brother? All praises, brother. Did you know that you are an Israelite according to the Bible? You are. Right. Come on, come on. Let me let me talk to you real quick. Okay, so okay, all right. Well, brother, hey, check that out, man. Check that out, brother. You are Israelite. Good eye, good eye, Kay. Cause I, I ain't see, I couldn't see. All right. So anyway, what we getting into? What I'm trying to get you to understand that what's written in this book is in fact your heritage. Okay, that's what it is, and it's not for nobody else other than the children of Israel. Okay, give me Psalms 147 and 19. I want you to read all the way through to the yeah, end. They definitely do rebrand our whole thing. They rebrand, absolutely, man. Because they know how powerful you can be. They know how powerful you are. They know how powerful the word is and what it can do in the right hands to their nation, to their empire. Destroy it. Bring it out, okay, bring that out for me. Psalms of David, chapter 147 and verse 19. No. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation. He have not dealt so with any nation. He have not dealt so with any nation. He's not dealing with them. He ain't dealing with no other nation other than Israel. And I just read it. All right, like I say, I didn't write that last night. That's in the Bible. Okay, give me this in uh, Sirach 24 and 23, King. Sirach 24 and 23. All these things are in the book of the covenant of the laws like of the most high God, even the law which Moses commanded for heritage unto the congregations of Jacob. Okay. Your heritage. This is what you missing. This is what we missing as a people. All right. They got us thinking that our heritage is damn Friday after next, man. Okay. NBA young boy. All right. What's the what's what's another one? Young dog. All right, that your heritage is nothing but murder, Nipsey hustle. hustle, right? That's not your heritage, man. Okay, you come from a royal bloodline of kings and priests who knew how to carry themselves in this world, who knew the power of the word, how that power they can use it to pretty much control the nations. So 
everything get, gets flipped into reverse. Instead of you holding them curses, those curses get placed on the ones that where they actually belong on. All right, and they gotta come to you for all the answers. Don't you want to be a rule on this earth, brother? Yeah. All right, I'm finna show you how you do that. Question: Do you guys have social media? Like, yeah, yeah, come. We, we got this. Did you get a flyer? Check this flyer out. We all we, we got the Gmail right there. We on Instagram too. Uh, you too. Now, if you hit that that QR code, gonna take you right to some videos. Subscribe to the channel, brother. We got a, we got our own channel that we you know what I'm saying we come out here every we got the time right at the top of the flyer. All right. So if you ever want to know more, you want to know more. Hey, sisters, y'all are Israelites according to the Bible. Okay, y'all are princesses of Zion. Let me get two minutes. I'm gonna show y'all something that's written in the Bible that y'all have not heard before. I promise you. Come on up there, y'all. We we here for y'all. We are brothers, man. We love y'all. All right. All praises. It ain't gonna, I, I don't need long. I don't need long to show y'all this. Give me 28 and 68. Let me ask y'all a question real quick. How were our people? Okay, I'm, I'm assuming that the majority of y'all are what, Negroes? Yes. You call yourself African American? Yeah. yeah. All right, I'm gonna break that down for you. How were we brought here to America? Y'all know history? Is it that you can't or you don't want to? Don't want to. Okay, bring this out real quick. That's all right. Do the line, 28. In verse 68, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. All right, so y'all, have y'all ever heard of the story of Moses and the ancient Hebrew Israelites that were in Egypt at one point in time building up the cities for Pharaoh? Y'all heard of that, right? Okay, so the Most High God is saying that he was going to bring a people into Egypt a second time. Meaning that we were, that there were Israelites in Egypt uh, before, in the land of Egypt before, doing what? Being slaves, building the cities for Pharaoh, right? Read on. Keep on. Right. And continuing on. By which shit? By the. Yes, I'm right there. Now, the Bible just lets you know how we got here to America. We got here on ships. Y'all heard of the slave trade, right? All right, that's how our people were brought here. We didn't just spawn into being like Call of Duty. All right, we were brought here. We were carried from our homelands, forced to serve here as slaves, build up these cities for them. They just financed it. All right, ain't that true? Am I lying or am I, am, am I, am I lying or not? We built these cities. They were built off our backs. All right. Okay. All right, so that's how we got here. The Bible is letting you know thousands, 2,000 plus years before it actually happened to us, what was going to transpire for not keeping the commandments. You got 28 and 15? Go ahead, Brian. Deuteronomy 28 and 15, and it reads thus. But it shall come to pass, if thou would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and do all his commandments, and his statutes, which I command you this day, that all these curses, all these blessings, all these curses, all these good things, all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Okay. So the Lord promised you, if you do not keep his commandments, if you continuously chase after your enemy and try to emulate them and copy them in every way, instead of keeping the commandments that I gave to you as a people, then he was going to do what? He was going to punish you by putting curses on you. What is a curse? What's a curse, sister? Something bad. It's something bad, right? Any movie you ever watched that has somebody getting cursed in it, did something good happen to that person? No. A curse is a bad thing. So the Lord is letting you know, hey, I will curse y'all for not keeping my commandments. And that's what happened, right? Okay? Let's finish that in 28 and 68. I'm losing the sister right here. She's, she's running after her enemy. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold and to your enemies. We were sold to our enemies. We were sold to the very ones we try to run after, right? Try to please and make happy. They beat the skin off of our people's backs, okay? You know, so you wanna know some of the terrible, horrifying things that they did to us? Just look at this board right here, huh? The way they burnt us alive, gathered around. They carried your people over the water in 722 BC. The Assyrian Empire did that to your people, okay? For they, all they tried to do was get away from them. They just wanted to get away from them, right? But couldn't escape them, all right? You dealing with the enemy so evil, he was created to do what? He was created to be a weapon to use against you. 
Go ahead, sister. Absolutely. Us being brought here to America was a curse that was placed upon us, okay? And I'm going to show you all some more curses. Give me uh, give me 54 real quick, King. Go to Isaiah 2. 28 of Deuteronomy, verse 54. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil toward his brother and toward the wife of his bosom and toward the remnant of his children, which he shall lead. Okay. Now, uh, sisters, brother, what that sound like to y'all? An evil eye towards your brother. That means, hey, wherever you, you know what I'm saying, you, you can't go down the street, you can't go down the block, you got to worry about your own people doing something to you. You turn on the news at, at, at night, and the majority of what you see is black-on-black -black violence, okay? Brothers that can't get along because they wear one brother wearing this color and another brother wearing that color and they claiming these letters and another brother claiming those letters. They don't that sound like that? Because at one point we didn't we, we loved each other. We would check on each other. We would make sure we were safe, we would make sure we were provided for, taken care of. We had love for one another. But it's not like that anymore. Okay? We just innately we have this innate inheritance to hate one another. Why is that? Because we curse. We curse as a people. We don't remember who we are. Okay? We don't keep the commandments. Our brothers are out of order. Our sisters are out of order. Okay? You don't learn anything in the schools. All you learn is what they want you to know. Have they ever told you, hey, we found y'all in uh, West Africa and uh, you fled Roman captivity in 70 AD? Okay? Even though you were being urged to keep the commandments, you would not keep them. Okay, so you were placed in our hands. You think they're going to tell you that? Uh -huh. Of course not. All right, have y'all ever heard that before? Okay, so let me ask y'all a question real quick. Based off what I just told y'all, what is y'all's nationality? Uh, 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 uh. Look at your flyer. Look at your flyer now. Because we just covered that. That's a, that's a proverb, a byword, and an astonishment. That's making you a laughing stock to the nations, calling yourself black, calling yourself African-American. Those things don't apply to y'all. You are not the color black. That would mean, by definition, that you would be the same color as those pants the sister is wearing. Is that true? No. No, you ain't nowhere near that shade. Y'all lovely, lovely shades of brown. Beautiful shades of brown. Okay, if anything, if you want to be technical about the color. Because, you know what I'm saying, at the end of the day, you're greater than a couple. You're much, much more than a couple. You have a heritage. You have a nationality. Okay? It, they have taken it from you and given it to another people. What's your nationality? You are an Israelite. Okay? You're an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. Let me hear y'all say that real quick. I just want to hear you say it. Huh? Be proud of it. Be proud when you say it. Sister, are you so-called Mexican? Mexican and Salvadorian? Is your father Mexican? All praises to the most high. That means you would be from the mighty tribe of Issachar at the very bottom. That's your heritage. Okay? Y'all are children of the light, man. You're not children of darkness. All Give right. me First Thessalonians 5 and 5 real quick. Okay? Don't let them call you a child of the night. Okay? You're meant to be a light to these wicked nations, man. You are meant to show them how to live. You should be ruling somewhere, brother. Okay? Y'all should never have to worry or want for a thing. Okay, bring this out for me, King. First Thessalonians, chapter five, in verse five. Hello. Ye are the children of the light, and the children of the day. We are not the, of the night, nor of darkness. No, you are not. You are not a dark child. You are not a black child. You are a child of the light. All right. Okay. What's your nationality? I want. I want. I want you to get it right. Go ahead. Huh? Go ahead, sister. Be proud of it. Well, I gotta do it. I can do it. I don't remember. All y'all do it together. Israelite. You are an Israelite. You are an Israelite. I want you to get in the habit of calling yourself an Israelite, okay? Just like it's second nature for you to tell me that you black and African American. I want that to be second nature to you. Okay, that's a beautiful thing before the most high, man. For you to start to wake up and remember who you are as a people. Now, let me ask y'all a question real quick. Give me Deuteronomy 22 and 5 and hold that real quick. Uh, do anybody eat pork up here? Any pork eaters up here? I barely eat. 
before. You, da- you say you dabble? I do. You barely eat it? Okay. This is how wicked this world is. You can't really go anywhere. You can't sit down and have a nice breakfast at any one of these places. The first thing they're trying to offer you is something with pork in it. All right. All right. Some sort of bacon. Some type of sausage, right? You say you got a piece of Okay, come on. Go ahead and bring it. This bitch. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 14. I'm going to go to three. No, jump down. That's verse 3. No. Thou shalt not eat any abominable thing. In verse number 9. I mean, verse number 8. And the swine, because it divides the hoof, yet to have not the good, it is unclean unto you. Okay. Ye should not eat of their flesh, nor touch their dead carcass. Now, the swine is missing one, it has one of two major characteristics that it must have in order for our people to eat it, okay? It has to have a cloven foot. You see, you know, the cow has got that cloven foot, it kind of looked like this, right? The pig's got something like that, but it has one thing that it needs. It needs to be able to properly digest its food. That's what cheweth the cud means. An animal that's chewing the cud, it has the ability to properly digest its food. Okay? A pig does not have that. Okay? A pig will eat anything, especially when it's hungry. Okay? It'll eat feces. It'll eat the dead. It'll eat whatever you put in front of it as long as it can chew it. Okay? And what happens? We take that pig. We slaughter it. We sell it in the grocery stores, we take it home, we cook it, we eat it. Whatever that pig has ingested, we have ingested. Hey, 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 brothers, what's your nationality? Can I ask y'all real quick? I just want to ask y'all your nationality. I ain't going to hold y'all. We family. I'm familiar. We do love y'all, man. We out here for y'all. I, don't, I just want to ask you real quick, brother, what your nationality is? Huh? A Mexican, American. A Mexican, right? Yes. That's what they call you. Hey, sisters, what's y'all's nationality? That's right. That's right. Don't forget that. Hey, brother, look. Get it. Get into that flyer, man. Subscribe and watch this, King, because it's much more that we need you to know. All right, we only scratched the, the surface of this thing. Okay. All right, you know you're an Israelite, but you got to know what commandments to keep. All right, we only went through a couple of them, brother. So subscribe. All right. All right, brother. We love you, man. You're an Israelite. Be safe. Have a nice day, guys. Yep. Yep. Okay, okay, we got mighty Issachar, mighty Ephraim in the building, man. Some Northern Kingdom brothers, man. All praises to the Most High, man. We happy to see y'all, man. All right. All we wanted to do is just let y'all know that according to the Bible, y'all are God's chosen people. Okay. That everything that you have to endure, everything that you have gone through as a people is, is explicitly explained in the Bible. Your enemy has successfully alienated you from the Bible, right? By associated himself with it, okay? But this Bible don't speak lightly of him. It don't paint him in a positive light. Now we got the whole role, we got the whole book, and we can dive into this thing, okay? We can tell you how your people were led, or our people, essentially, were uh, fleeing Assyrian captivity in 722, fleeing across the waters, just trying to get away from your oppressors. Okay, vowing and promising. Matter of fact, let me get that a second. Ezra's 13. Get out, get out, get out. And uh, I think that's 13 and 40. 13. Go ahead, bring it out. Hold on, hold on, y'all. Listen to this real quick. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should that ye should show forth the praise of him. Who have called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. A strange people. Peculiar. Set apart. Holy. Alright. The Lord's calling you out of a state of darkness. What's that darkness? It's ignorance of yourself. It's ignorance of your past and where you actually came from. It seems like you don't exist prior to a particular date. Right? Because they know once you get into that you'll realize where you really came from. Alright? And all the lies that they've been using against you. Okay, have you ever heard anywhere before that you was actually an Israelite from the Northern Kingdom? They made sure that you wouldn't hear that anywhere. Right. Okay, but we have uh, we have historical documentation that we can show you, share with you, and prove to you that this is not something we just came up with. Okay, there's certain verses in the Bible that explicitly explains how you, your people tried their best to get away from them, and you vowed to keep the commandments of your forefathers. Okay, let me get that real quick. Put up. 
Second Andrews 13 and verse 40. Yeah. Those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Hosea, the king of whom Solomon Nassar, the king of Assyria, led away captive, and he carried them over the waters. And so came they into another land, but they took this counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and come forth into the, a further country where never mankind dwelt. That was America. That was that country that no man had ever been before, right? That's why you had the beautiful natives, man. The beautiful, uh, 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 what's them tribes, man? The beautiful Gadites, man, that was here. And the, and the Reubenites, man. And the Issacharites that had settled in parts of Mexico and South America, right? Building and making families. Trying to get back to the law, statutes, and commandments, but things got forgotten, man. Things got twisted. Our people became twisted. Then what happened, man? You had Christopher Columbus, nasty Christopher Columbus, who came there. What'd he do? What'd he do to our people? He led us into slavery all over again, man. Right? He settled. He raped our people. Right? He tainted our bloodlines. Okay? Now, all of a sudden, we're Hispanics. You're Hispanic. Hispanic only means Hispaniard. That means property of Spain. You belong to them, in other words. But you had a rich and illustrious history prior to them. All right? And that's what they're not telling you. Okay? Now, let me ask y'all a question real quick about some commandments, man. How many commandments do y'all think it is? Uh, uh, 13. 13? Okay. That's something that the world tells us about 12, 13 and commandments. There are literally and actually 613 plus laws, statutes, and commandments written in the Bible. All right. All right? Some we cannot keep. Some we don't have the ability to keep because we're not in the motherland anymore. Okay? So we do what we're able to do here in our in the land of our captivity by rehearsing these righteous acts. Okay? Brother, I see you already have a mighty beard. Did y'all did y'all know that that was a commandment for our people to keep? That you let that mighty beard grow out? And you don't let nobody tell you you gotta cut that beard? Right, right, right. Okay? Because that's your that's the manly badge of dignity. You think about a lion in a jungle. Well, how can you tell the difference between a male and a female lion? The man. The mane. Without that mane, you couldn't tell the difference. Okay? So you always wear that manly bag of, uh, badge of dignity. You got it, don't you? Bring it up. This is Leviticus chapter 21 and verse number 5. No. They shall not make any baldness upon their head. Right. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard, nor make any cuttings in their flesh. Right. Okay? So you're commanded to keep that manly beard. You know what I'm saying? Don't shave your head off and try to do it a mic. Don't, don't try to pull a mic. Jordan, man. You don't need to do that. Let that hair grow out. Let your beard grow out. Okay? That's a sign of manly dignity for you. Let me ask y'all another question real quick. Anybody eat pork? Any pork eaters? You don't mess with the chorizo? Uh, yeah. All right. I got to show you something else, all right? These are our dietary laws. So we've got, we've got these laws, and we've got them categorized. Okay, if you keep these laws, they're gonna show you how to be healthy. They're gonna show you how to be strong. They're gonna keep, it's going to keep you strong. It's going to keep you healthy. Uh, people suffer from all manner of sicknesses and illnesses because of the things that we put in our bodies. Okay, bring that up. Leviticus chapter 11 and verse seven. Yeah. And the swine, though it divide the hoof and be cloven footed, yet he chewed not the cud. He is unclean unto you. Of their flesh shall you not eat, and their carcass shall ye not touch. They are unclean to you. Okay, so that's the pig. The pig is that swine. Okay, we commanded as a people not even to touch the dead carcass of a pig. You see a dead pig on the sidewalk, you're supposed to step over that thing and keep it moving. All right, so what we look like eating this pig and taking it and ingesting it inside of our, uh, inside of our bodies. That's how this world is created, man. It's, it's, it has these things in place that so that the first thing you're doing in the morning is defiling your temple, destroying your body, breaking the commandments. Because brothers got to have that bacon and eggs in the morning. You got to have that sausage. You know what I mean? That's how this world is created against you. They're not worried about keeping the commandments. They told you it was 13 of them. Okay, so they ain't worried about it. They don't have to keep the commandments because it's not for them. It was for you to keep. Okay? So you got to make a choice. You got to make a decision today who you going to serve. Give me Joshua 24, 15. Uh, let me ask y'all another. Hold that real quick. 
Let me ask y'all another question real quick. Do y'all eat uh, any seafood? Y'all like seafood? That's good, okay? Because there are certain animals in the water that we can, we are allowed to eat, okay? But they have to have two vital characteristics, okay? Bring that out for me. This is verse number nine of Hello. chapter 11 in Leviticus. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters, whatsoever have fins and scales in the waters, in the seas, and in the rivers. Them shall ye eat. Okay, so what does an animal that lives in the water, what are, what are two of the things that they must have in order for our people to be able to eat them? According to what I just read. Out of the water. Uh -huh. We did get These shall ye eat that are in the waters, whatsoever hath fins and scales in the waters. Okay, fins and scales. They must have both fins and scales. Now you got a lot of fish in the water that have both fins and scales. Let's name off a few. You got tilapia, you got perch, you got tuna, you got whiting, you got, what what, what you say bro? Salmon, okay, bass, perch, right? These are these are clean fish. They got this armor going on, man. They got these, these scales. They act like an armor, man. They protect them in the water. They got the fins too, all right. But our people, they like to get off into some wickedness, man. All right, you got our people. Some of our people, they eating uh, 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 shark, shark fin soup, okay, catfish, turtles, turtles, you know, alligator, you know, at, at, right. These are things that we're not supposed to be eating. Catfish don't have scales on them. They slip, all right? So remember that. Next time somebody put a plate of some catfish in, in, in your face or some shrimp or some lobster or some crab, okay? You tell them, hey, my, I'm keeping the commandments up. The Lord don't want me eating them things, all right? I'm breaking the commandments when I eat them things. Also, man, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's polluting. The water is already messed up, okay? Why is it messed up? Because we eating all of the janitors of the water. We take them and we eat them. Okay, if you leave them alone, the waters will start getting clean again. So, brother, what's your nationality according to what I just told you? What I just told you? Take the side out. That's the cheat sheet, buddy. You said you was masking, right? I, I see your brothers, they, they they trying to get out of here. That's why I want to see what how much you, you going to retain. You said you was Mexican, right? Look on that side right there. Issachar. You from the mighty tribe of Issachar, brother. You are an Israelite from the tribe of Issachar. Alright? Give me one thing you know you uh that you are not supposed to eat according to the Bible. You got it. What types of fish can we eat? You can eat tilapia. But why can you eat tilapia? Because they have pins and scales. Read it for him one more time. Leviticus chapter 11 and verse number 10. Hello. And, uh, and verse number 9. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters, whatsoever hath fins and scales in the waters, okay. in the seas and in the rivers. Them shall ye eat. So that's, that's what you need to remember from going forward. If it's coming out of the waters, it's got to have fins and scales on it. Otherwise, the Lord said, don't eat it. Okay, are you going to go and eat lobster? What about pig? You going to go eat some pig? Why? Why not? Because the Lord said we're not allowed to eat. Okay? And if you want a chance to be restored to your right, uh, to your rightful uh, rulership and be a king back on this earth, you got to do what? You got to do what the Lord said. You got to keep the commandments. Okay, brother? So, hey, we love you, man. I ain't gonna hold you no more. I see y'all trying to get out of here. Okay, so we can go on there. Keep going. Oh, oh no, yeah, we got okay. somewhere to go. All right, brother. But look, we got the YouTube on the bottom. I encourage you to do your own research and come to your own understanding. Do some, do some history checking, some fact checking to see the things that I'm saying to you is true or not. All right, bro. Okay, good. Yeah. All right, guys. So the people, man. All right, we gonna continue with the word of the Lord. Go ahead and give me that uh, Joshua 24 for ten. Because our people need to understand it is time to make a choice who you are going to serve in these final days. Get up, King. All right? And you need to stick to that decision, man. That's right. That's right. It's the book of Joshua, chapter 24, and verse 15. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose ye.
this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the god of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. That's right. I'll praise this to the most high, man. Make a decision in these final days, man. All right? You either going to choose to serve the Lord or you're going to choose to serve your own sinful lust. Hey, sisters, y'all believe in the Bible? Can I get two minutes? Can I get two minutes? Just two minutes. Give me two minutes, sisters. All praise to the most high. Okay, all praise the sister. Can I ask you, uh, do you... Do you see yourself anywhere on the sign? If you don't want to be on the camera, just let us know. No. Okay. Let me give you a fly real quick. Do you see yourself anywhere on that sign right there? Where? Right here. It's, a, it's, it's right there. Thank you. Um. I don't know. Start on this side. Look all the way down. What would your father be? You see it anywhere? All of them. You see, you say all of them. Uh, okay. <laughs> what, would, what would his father be? I mean, my father would be Negro. Okay. All praise to the Most High. That means that you would be from the tribe of Judah. You are an Israelite. Okay. We are not Negroes. Okay. We're not African American. These are classifications that have been placed upon us. They curses. Okay. Because we've been discontinued from our real heritage as a people. Okay. And we don't remember who we are. Okay? All right? Have you ever heard that before? Yeah. You heard it before? Yeah. Okay, all praises. Let's get into it with, uh, for the sister. Give me Deuteronomy 29 and 1 real quick. I want to show you something that's written in the Bible. Deuteronomy chapter 29 and verse 1. Bring it out. These are the words of the covenant which the Lord commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel. So this is a book of covenants. This is a book of law, statutes, commandments. This is your. This has your heritage written within it. Okay. All right. To keep these law, statutes, commandments is to is to come to life. All right. But to leave them aside is to die. All right. Give me Baruch four and one, King. Okay. And brother, go to twenty eight and fifteen and hold that real quick. It's the book. It's the book of Baruch, chapter four and verse one. This is the book of the commandments of God and the law that endure forever. All they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. So if you leave these laws, you will die. Okay? But if you keep them, you go live. All right? Let me get that in Deuteronomy 28 and 15. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 15. You know. But it shall come to pass. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Is a curse a good thing? Absolutely not, right? A curse is definitely a bad thing. You put a curse on somebody, you don't want nothing good to happen to them, right? Okay? So the Lord is saying here that if you don't keep my commandments, all right? Because I gave these commandments to you as a people, not everybody else on earth. But I gave them to you and treated you as a child, as my son and my daughter. If you don't keep these commandments, what's going to happen? You will be cursed. Read 16. Verse 16. Cursed shall thou be in the city, and cursed shall thou be in the field. Okay. So you're cursed to walk these, walk up and down these streets, not really knowing who you are, allowing your enemies to classify you. Okay? And this is what he does throughout the earth. He classifies things as if he's the authority, okay? But he's not that authority, okay? And he can't tell you who you are, all right? But the Bible can, right? Because I just told you, it's your heritage. This is your record, your, your genealogy right here. This is every historical and major event throughout history, every shift in power and government that occurred on the face of the earth, right to the very beginning, is right here in this book. And they want to keep you away from it, okay? So they're removing, they're removing God, they're removing the Bible from everything in this society, okay? Because they don't want you to catch on to the possible, to, to the fact that you are not who they told you that you are, that you're not some nigger, 
okay? That you're not some uh, uh, real B-I-T-C-H, all right, or whatever you want to call it. That you actually have a heritage and a nationality, okay, that's God-given, all right? And you have laws and different customs that you are commanded to keep as a people, all right? Give me Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. Hello. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Right. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Right. For all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. Have you ever heard that before in the Bible? Okay. What is that going into? That means that there are certain, there are certain items or apparel that men wear that belong to women that we're not supposed to be wearing. For instance, if you saw brothers, they was up here, they was wearing summer dresses or wearing pencil skirts. Would you be inclined to stop and listen to us talk about the Bible to you? You would stop and listen. Well, that's madness. That's madness because a man that's going to wear a dress should not be respected. Right. Because according to the Bible, a man is not supposed to put on a woman's garment and vice versa. Right. So if you're saying that, then you, you can't really say that you believe in the Bible. And that's what the word said, right? You gonna listen to her? Okay, but I'm not going to wear a dress. So what I'm? But I will have respect you in your garment. Okay, come on back up here, sister. Don't go away just yet, because I'm not. I'm not always going to tell you sweet things. I'm not always going to tell you what you want to hear. I got to tell you the truth according to the Bible. Does say the Bible? Does say the Lord? And I'm listening to you, and I love you. Okay. Absolutely, absolutely, and we love you too, that's why I'm going to tell you the truth, okay, a woman is not meant to wear pants, okay, or hold hands with another woman, Right. all right, that, I saw it, I saw it in you, that's why I wanted you to come up here so I can give you the word, all right, okay, our people are, tw they got our people all types of twisted up, man, okay, you going to say the word is the word, yet when I read you the word and I tell you the Lord told you not to do these things, you're going to tell me that you're going to somehow make an excuse, and yeah, get to booking, man. It's time to go after that. Because you know what I'm about to get into, man. You know what I'm saying? Let me get Romans, uh, give me Romans 1. And go to, uh, go all the way to, uh, to 24. Let me see that. Yeah, let me see. Come on, let's start. Romans chapter 1 and verse 28. It's the book of Romans chapter 1 and verse 24. No. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts right. to dishonor their own bodies okay. between themselves. Okay. Who? God, hold that. So at the end of the day, the Lord has given over certain people, given them over to their lust, given them over to the things that they believe to be truth. Okay, like a man can can put on a woman's garment, a woman can wear a man's garment and lay with another woman like she would lay with the man. Okay, to do these things and work these things that are unseemly before the eyes of the Lord. Okay, and they claim to love him. That's total, total hypocrisy, man. That's total blasphemy. All right, that's the highest form of disrespect, man. Okay, go ahead and read them. Bro. Hey, 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 only God is good, brother. You are an Israelite according to the Bible, okay? You guys chose the people. Let's carry it. Who, verse 25, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever, amen. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their woman did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of a woman, burned in their lust, one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseeming, and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error, which was me. Alright? And, 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 and that's, that's so nasty. And, and, and so disgusting and, and just backwards, man. That's why the Lord is smiting these people with all manners of plagues. That's why you have HIV. That's why you have monkeypox that's going around like it's going around. Okay? Because you want me to respect your right to freak off for the whole month. I'm supposed to honor your right to do whatever you want to do in your bedroom. 
okay? My, you can tell me that my kid, if my kid decides that they want to change their sexual orientation, that they have a right to do that, right? And they ain't nothing but five, six years old. Like, I have to listen to uh, and, and respect what they like to do, what their sexual orientation is. They ain't nothing but five damn years old. What you know about sex? Come on, man. And you, 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 you hear that? Do you know it's true, man? Okay? That's why this place is finished. That's why it's finished. Come on, brother. Come on out here, brother. I see you looking, brother. We got something for you, man. We got something real nice for you and your family, man. It's the words of truth, man. It's the words of truth. I ain't, I ain't lying, man. If I'm lying, I'm frying up here, man. Right. Okay? This place finished, man. That's okay. Right? Why should I have to honor your right to be whatever creep that you want to be? That's right. That don't make sense, man, but I'm going to carry on. I'm going to carry on with my lesson, man. Hey, brother, you all right over there? I think we done dealt with you before, brother. You went to GOCC? Say, say again, brother. Yes, we are royal priesthood. Let me get that for the brother. We are a priesthood. We are a priest unto the most high Yahweh. We are a priest who's supposed to be an example to these other nations to show them how to live. What you got, Ken? Listen to this. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. First Peter 2 and 9. But ye are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. A what? A royal priesthood. And holy nation. And peculiar people. Ye should. God. So that's what I'm talking about. Uh, we are a royal, uh, a nation of royal priests of kings. You realize that, okay? You, you kind of affiliated with GOCC. All praises for that. Brother, as long as brother's doing the work, and as long as you teach your people that the so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans that you are the true Israelites spoken of in the Bible, okay? I ain't got no problems with them, all right? Every camp going to have different doctrines and different ways of going about how they teach, okay? But at the end of the day, we all trying to do the work, all right? So you're absolutely right about that. We are priests. Okay, we are priests unto the Most High Yahweh. Okay, then we minister to our people. Okay, you looking at us? We're like spiritual doctors, spiritual surgeons, and we're watching our people walk up and down these streets. They got all sorts of illnesses and ailments. On. Okay, we trying to take this spiritual scalpel and remove some of that cancer, remove some of that sickness off our people. Sometimes it's painful. There's gonna be some blood. All right, but it's for your benefit. Give me Mark 2 and 17. Give me that real quick. All right, because a, a, a healthy person has no need for a doctor and a physician. Okay, so that physician is sent for those who are sick, who needs who need care. Okay, am I right? Mark chapter 2 and verse 17. When Jesus heard it, he said unto them, They, are that, they that are whole have no need of the physician. But they that are sick, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repent. Okay, so we're here for the sinners. We're here for our people. Those who don't know that they're Israelite sisters. Do y'all know that y'all Israelites? Okay, y'all are God's chosen people, okay? All right, that's who we're here for. And that's, who, that's, that's what it's about, man.